James Harden getting him up pregame before he and the Rockets take on the Pelicans. He had 40 in the win over Orlando the other night, which means his January scoring average went down. That's coming up at uh, the top of the hour as the Players Only franchise returns to TNT Pelicans and Rockets coming up. Grant Hill will be part of that broadcast along with Isaiah Thomas, Jason Terry, and Karan Butler. And as you can see, here he is in the flesh, or at least on TV, joining us from Houston. Grant, there aren't many storylines that can steal the spotlight away from what James Harden has been doing, but this Anthony Davis thing has people talking. What is the ripple effect around the league for you? Well, Matt, you're right. I mean, James Harden's been great, particularly this last four to six weeks. But Anthony Davis, the news of uh, his desire to be traded uh, and traded soon from the New Orleans Pelicans is certainly uh, on everyone's mind, particularly here in Houston, as we had a chance to visit with Mike D'Antoni and, and Alvin Gentry and uh, just a lot of uh, unknown uh, a player of his magnitude, the options, what's going to happen moving forward. Uh, the Pelicans going to quickly try and do something now prior to the trade deadline or will they wait until the summer uh, so just a lot of unknowns right now but the thing we do know is that uh, no is that obviously uh, he wants out of New Orleans uh, and the big question is where will he go he's the kind of player uh, that can have a huge impact if you uh, you know depending upon where he goes and who he may or may not partner up with so uh, a lot of excitement a lot of intrigue uh, certainly something on tonight's broadcast I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about uh, quite a bit, but uh, certainly the news of the NBA at this moment. I imagine, uh, I imagine you will be discussing that a fair amount. The, the, <laughs> the tentacles of this thing are so far reaching around the league, including the balance of power in whichever conference he lands in. Uh, meanwhile, Harden's numbers in January are just absurd. And now Chris Paul has returned to the lineup. So in your mind, how close are the Rockets to being where they were last season when they wound up winning 65 games? You know, it's a great question, Matt. They, they, they're closer. Uh, I think early in the year, obviously, they're a different team. They weren't as talented. Uh, it, it, you know, Mike D'Antoni was starting rookies, even guys who were undrafted rookies. So different roles. They were struggling. They managed to sort of maintain their confidence and spirit through that stretch. Uh, Chris Paul went down. Uh, and James Harden went crazy <laughs> and obviously has played uh, at, at an MVP caliber rate. Um, but I think I think bringing in a Kenneth Fareed uh, when Capella went down has been huge. Uh, he was kind of on that bench there lost in Denver. You move him now to the center position. He's one of the best at, at, at setting screens and rolling to the basket and plays with a tremendous amount of energy. Uh, Austin Rivers has come over, a veteran who uh, is, a, is a really good on-the-ball defender. Uh, now you're getting Chris Paul back. Capella's coming back. Uh, so I think this team is, is trending in the right direction. Obviously, you have to give a lot of credit to James Harden. But I think, I think the personnel has gotten better since the team that they had at the start of the season. Uh, Harden uh, is in obviously tip-top uh, form and is in great shape right now and playing elite basketball. And then you're getting, you know, you're getting Chris Paul back, which I think will help. Because the big question is, can Harden – continue at this pace uh, you know, throughout the entire season into the postseason. They're going to need Chris Paul to be healthy and productive for them to try to have a run like they had last season. Grant Capella played such an important part, especially with Harden on the floor. I mean, this guy was uh, seventh in the league in rebounding, third in field goal. You know, all these things that he had done, all-star basically performance by Capella. They lose him and bring in a guy who had almost vanished away from the NBA as far as getting minutes on the floor, getting an opportunity to play. What has Mike D'Antoni said about Fareed coming in and the role he's playing? Well, Mike D'Antoni, I mean, I played for Mike D'Antoni. Dave, Dave Griffin, obviously, we were all out there in Phoenix together. He, he always used to say that the ball finds energy. And there may not be a big guy in the league that has the kind of energy that a Kenneth Fareed. You know, I think in Denver, uh, obviously, he became the manimal. He played... Uh, with, with, you know, with, at, a, at an elite level, was on the Olympic team at one point or the U.S. Uh, World Championship basketball team. And then Jokic came in, and, and all of a sudden, fours are expected to be able to shoot from the perimeter. That wasn't his game, uh, but it was the perfect timing. There was a void here, Capella being out. He's come in, playing more of the five position, uh, you know, setting screens, rolling to the basket, finishing. You know, when Capella was out for that 10-game stretch, 
they weren't getting baskets at the rim. They were shooting even more three-pointers uh, with a P.J. Tucker at the center position. But Fareed now sort of plays that diver role, and he dives so hard that you have to really, uh, defensively guarding Houston, you have to make uh, an adjustment. You have to make the proper read. Uh, and so now getting back to that basketball that they're accustomed to playing. And for Reed, when Capella comes back, now you have two bigs who can come in and play and give you different looks both on offense and on defense. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Chris Paul uh, getting back in the mix. So this team, like I said, is, is moving in the right direction. But Fareed has been huge, and certainly Mike D'Antoni has been very happy. Grant, one of the things I think that gets lost in all of this Anthony Davis talk is exactly how good Drew Holiday has been this season and the burden he's been carrying. He's had to play nine games without AD as it is, and he's probably been their most consistent player. What does Alvin say about Drew and the season he's had and where they go from here? Yeah, you know, Dave, we, we talked about Drew with Alvin. He just said he's been solid. He's been consistent. Nothing phases him. He'll come out and be a professional uh, play at a high level. And you're right, with all the, the talk this year of, of Anthony Davis and what's his future and obviously the news uh, here in the last 48 hours, you know, Drew Holiday is putting up all-star numbers and you know, 20 points, eight, eight assists. Uh, you know, obviously would be in the all-star game if, if New Orleans was in the playoff picture. Uh, but quietly under the radar, just going about his business, uh, playing great. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. We, you know, one of the things we talked about, and certainly Drew Holiday plays a role, but we, played, we talked about this with Alvin, when they've had all their guys healthy, all the guys that played in their, you know, top seven, eight man rotation, you know, they've been seven and three this year. And they just, you know, the injuries and, and, and AD being out, Miritich, uh, at, at times Randall was out, Peyton was out for 31 games early in the year. This team doesn't have great depth and, and not having these guys healthy has really hurt them. And you never really got a chance to see what this team could do after the success of last season in the postseason. So, uh, but Drew Holiday, he has been a mainstay, and, and he's been someone who, you know, even against Houston, he's guarded James Harden well. You know, the, the games they played prior, he's, you know, been able to, you know, really you know, keep him off the three-point line, uh, not foul him, make him a two-point shooter. And if you look at the numbers, he's actually done a pretty good job head-to-head, -head, and I imagine we'll, we'll get a lot of that tonight. Injuries a factor again tonight for the Pelicans. Julius Randle is out. Uh, Etwan Moore is going to rest tonight. Alfred Payton also out with the ankle injury in addition, of course, to Anthony Davis. Grant Hill, though, fit as a fiddle and ready to broadcast at the top of the hour. Players only tonight. It's the Pelicans and the Rockets. We'll see you then. All right, guys. Thank you. Much more coming up here on game time between now and the start of that game. Uh, the Anthony Davis story is of some interest to the folks in Los Angeles. We'll get the perspective from out there when we come back. Drew Holiday getting set to go in Houston tonight in the middle of what, what could be maybe his best season as a pro. He's had a, some really good ones, former All-Star in the Eastern Conference as well. Uh, hasn't shown up in the win column, and the Pelicans are in danger of falling out of relevance in the West. Here's Holiday with Karan Butler ahead of a players-only Tuesday night. Here with Drew Holiday, can you just talk to me about your mindset coming in here playing the Rockets today? Right, um, really good team. Uh, we've also, or we've all seen what James has been doing. Um, do our best to try to corral him and, and, and stop him from scoring 40 points. Um, run him off the three-point line, that's what they love to do. And uh, also keep James off the free throw line. Yeah. So I, I guess you're going to get the first crack at him, or obviously a crack at him. So how would you slow him down being one of the best two-way guys in the game? Um, honestly, just try to keep him guessing. Uh, sometimes play, play him up close, uh, make him drive, sometimes play off of him. Uh, try to be handsy, but in a way that, that, that it doesn't uh, cause fouls and uh, really rely on my teammates. Um, uh, drive down there into the big to be able to, to block or make him pass it out uh, for, for a three, and from there we're going to have to rotate. I know this is one of the tough times for the organization right now with AD news coming out. You know, you said that based upon him, in his future, 90% of the reason you was here because of him. Can you just speak on that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, in my opinion, he's what top three in the world. Uh, his athletic ability, what he can do as a as a as an athlete, as a player, um, even a friend. I've been with him for six years, so uh, I feel like for me, coming around a talent of of that caliber uh, was kind of once in a lifetime, and uh, we had a good thing going. So. Uh, but but on that note, man, Anthony's doing everything he, he's doing best for himself, and, and I'm not mad at that. Um, he's he's the ultimate professional. He still comes here and works and, and uh, st still cheers for his team. So uh, I'm happy for him. Last question, does that change anything 
with your future going forward? Uh, as of right now, no. I'm here to play basketball. Uh, today, specifically, I'm here to try to beat the Houston Rockets. So uh, go out there, give it my all, and, and try to exhaust myself and play as hard as I can. Hey, good luck. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Thank you, Guys. Interesting thoughts from Drew Holiday there, and got to deal with that guy tonight, James Harden. And the Rockets, Chris Paul back in the lineup. They've won three in a row in four of their last five. They get set to go against the Pels. Chris Paul played 25 minutes the other night after returning from that hamstring injury. 12 points, five boards, six assists on four of eight shooting. He is back tonight as the Rockets take on the Pelicans. Here's Mike D'Antoni on his point guard and his second game back. Well, I think it, I mean, it's, we, we have to do it that way. I don't think Chris enjoys that. He'd rather stay in and play, but we need to be cautious here next couple weeks, and then he'll he'll eventually get back up to 30, 31, where, where we'd like to keep him. Have you ever built something like they've got going where it's out there? What, what? The limbo that they seem to be in now? No, not really. No, it's kind of odd. How tough of a thing is that uh, to well, keep the focus? That's tough. You know, I, you'd have to be inside the locker room, and I, I, I can't. I'm, this never happened to me, and I'm not over there, so I will have no clue. You, even just the game or two before a trade deadline can be somewhat tense. Well, most players get a little nervous about them, but, they, you know, happens to everybody in the sense of everybody knows that it's a business and that's part of the deal but you got to keep focused and get through it and I'm sure there's a lot of players like to get to the other side of the deadline so that they can stay at home but that's just part of business. When you think about what you guys have done in a sense adding off the rivers and Kev Free kind of making deadline deals in the middle of the season have, have really worked out have they not? Oh it's really worked out and especially with all the injuries that uh, they both those guys have saved us and got us into a position where we are. Now we've added them to a pretty good team. So as soon as we get everybody back, you know, we'll see what we got, but it looks promising for sure. Do you, do you guys, is it too early to get progress updates on Clint and how he's doing and everything? Uh, he's laying in the sun, I'm sure. He's just out there in California somewhere. <laughs> Not bad. It's, it's something that he has to heal. He, he's, uh, he'll be ready to go when it's time. Gentry and the Pelicans have to deal with. Oh, yeah. There's James Harden who's averaged 44 in the month of January, and regardless of what he does tonight, will become the fourth player in NBA history to average 40 points for a calendar month. A remarkable thing. Even more remarkable than Wilt did it 11 times. Kobe actually did that four times. I did not, did not realize that. No, that's, that's a remarkable number, especially in today's league, the way the game is played. To have him be in a position to do this with all of the great stars we have, and so many guys have never done this, really speaks to a lot of different things. But I think it's the perfect blend of the right coach, the right front office, and the right star. You have to remember, he's doing this. Wilt did not bring the ball down the floor, did right. not dribble into the low post area, and then did not dunk it on top of people. Somebody was passing him the ball. James does this all basically on his own. It's not him coming off a screen, somebody hits him, he catches and shoots it. He doesn't operate that way. So right. what, 95, 98% of the time, it's James by himself during this month making things happen for himself. Virtually all unassisted baskets. Exactly. Yeah. Coach, you know, I just learned, Will Chamberlain was underutilized. He should have been given the <laughs> ball and said, just should have been taking it, it up. There. <laughs> <laughs> he did just about everything else. Um, so Harden will try to extend his 30-point scoring streak to 24. Uh, he'll also try to extend his streak of being the leading scorer among all scorers in the game he's playing to 24, which is another remarkable team because that affects the other team. Well, it might actually get more difficult in a weird sort of way because he has more talent with him now. One of the things that really sort of propelled him on this streak was the fact that there's nobody else to demand the ball. And what's fascinating is it played right into the sort of mad science experiment that they've had, which is if we can control every single possession and control outcome possession by possession, we can overcome the fact that we may not be deep enough on the defensive side of the ball. Chris Paul coming back means he may have less touches and maybe they're less efficient offensively, which in a weird way puts more pressure on their defense. By the way, Harden's next 50-point game will move him up the all-time list of career 50-point games. He'll pass Rick Barry 
for fifth all time if he gets number 15 or when he gets number 15. It's going to happen sooner or later. Again, Wilt skews the graphic with 118 career 50 point games. You do that when you average 50 for an entire season. That tends to mess things up. Uh, over or under tonight against the Pelicans, the shorthanded Pelicans, uh, for points for James Harden, we're going to put it at 45. I'm under. I think. I think that Alvin Gentry is not afraid to try something different. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Alvin say, we're going to trap him every time he comes or goes this way or that way, or you know, send the guy at him to get the ball out of his hands. Try something a little bit different. He would do that. Okay. So I was adamantly to the under when I first was posed this question mm -hmm. here as we were talking offset. I have to be honest with you. I think I've, I've come around to the idea that simply because you and I are working, it has to be a given that he gets 50 <laughs> points. So I'm going to take the over. <laughs> that is a sound strategy. I can't, argue, I can't argue with that kind of logic. I'm going to go under as well. Chris Paul's out there. He's going to take some of the possessions away from him. And frankly, the Pelicans aren't playing very well right now. Defensively, they've been really bad all season. Harden might not need to play a ton in the fourth quarter. We'll see how that plays out later on tonight. Uh, much more coming up here on game time here for a Tuesday night. It's a players-only Tuesday night on TNT.